Hello and welcome to Save Points, cosmic lessons I've learned about life and myself by playing video games. My name is Gold Vision, and today I've decided to switch gears for a more fast-paced, shell of a good time, a game often referred to as Mario Kart. I must apologize for my recent departure from video, to be honest, after making this rather small series about life lessons, I somehow ended up with an intense need to re-evaluate my own life and everything about it. This of course crumbling any attempts at creativity as a lightning bolt might crumble one's chances of jumping a lava river. Regarding the subject of time, I'd like to discuss a lesson I recently identified in my own strange perspective of existence. It's a simple and oft-spoken idiom, take your time, a suggestion that some teacher must have thrown at me as I stumbled through a speech in front of the whole 6th grade class. Take your time isn't about being embarrassed in front of Mr. Jefferson and getting a B plus, and you have to do an extra credit worksheet about zebras. Take your time simply means that every second of your time is yours, so take it. Enter Mario Kart 8, the first Mario Kart I've been interested in since Mario Kart 64, my bewilderment with Double Dash lasting all the way until last Friday. At the risk of sounding obstinate or unprepared, I must note that this was my very first time playing online as Gold Vision. I had unlocked virtually all the characters, having played entirely through the 50cc difficulty to do so. 50cc being a Japanese phrase translated, the carts are slower and kinder. Enjoy the view, young Mario man. The art of unlocking quickly becoming one of my least favorite video chores, definitely better than updating and not quite as painful as leveling, as rewards come at a quick pace if you can half-drive your junk car around the slowest of Grand Prix options. This consistent and dedicated playment led me to find my new favorite character, you guessed it, Terminator Mario. His cold-heartedness and laser beam zappy eyes make him a primed and balanced racer, probably even worth renaming the next game for, maybe, I don't know. Fueled with anticipation and ready to jump right into the action immediately, I am told to sit tight as I would be made to spectate the initial match. Normally I would get up and make a quick coffee, or a Shirley Temple, or a keg of beers, but I took this time to study up and analyze my future opponents. Starting of course with Binks, the hot or notest me on the course, racing as the title character Red Terminator Mario. Binks had a panache for drafting and a certain distrust for traffic cones, making her a relatively threatening opponent until the second she took a slightly bad line and bumped off the road a tiny little bit. Which as we know in Mario Kart is completely unforgivable and an action from which there will be no recovery. I switched to the player in first, Franco of Mexico, who is of course winning because of his ridiculous actual race car looking car combined with vampire teeth suggesting hundreds of years of Mario Kart practice and expertise. Coupled with his ability to turn his head completely around, somehow Franco seems to be the biggest threat to my future victories. Second, of course, to CK, who destroys him by an insurmountable margin and who is not to be confused with identical Koopa racer Pabloicious, suffering from place-induced depression, the kind that comes from coming in sixth. Having heavily and unjustifiably judged these avatars of people I'll never meet, I come to realize I'm actually a giant goliath crushing the Quebec while performing pre-race calisthenics. Showing complete indifference to my Quebec aside, I move to engage in full-fledged democracy, casting my vote for a random map as a player named Daddy begins making me uncomfortable, somehow even when restricted to the use of E-rated pre-programmed chats. As my avatar dances what is virtually identical to my usual election dance, the votes are scanned and I, along with everyone else, celebrate as only Binks' vote is counted and process turning what I thought was a democracy into, I guess, a raffletocracy. I'm placed near the back of the grid on Koopa Dupa Falls, several places behind raffle president Binks. At the green light I get the starting boost, catching me up to the initial pack who deny me of any of the initial item blocks whilst bumping me up into third place. I am casually accumulating coins and boost jumps when I approach Meander's Yoshi in second place with the noise box. After rewatching this bit of playback several times I realize it was probably in my best interest to avoid passing him until the box was used up, but instead I end up drafting and take the full brunt of his attack, losing three coins and falling behind former victor CK. A bomb left on the track by Meanders takes both me and CK down for a moment, leaving me to question the safety precautions taken by the Mario Kart racing staff as well as the awful raffletocracy dictating the prize box system, giving higher ranking players life-altering power-ups and me some vague selection of Amanita Muscaria virtually every time. Will from Massachusetts flies past CK and I, dropping a banana I am fortunate enough to avoid, and consequently starting what would become a several generation blood feud. Chasing him down, I forget to paraglide up to the top track until it was too late, which helps me drop slash remain in the pleasant and terrible fourth place. As I chase my mortal sworn enemy, the burning in my Terminator eyes gives way to a fire flower, a power up with a cold stare, fully acknowledging that Mario Kart is war and there are no winners, only survivors. The second fireball somehow hitting its will, I decide to conserve as I had two more places to climb and Meanders was just around the corner. A quick slide bumping Will out of the way and gaining back some missing ground, I cross the finishing line to realize that this had only been the first lap. I run out of fire before I have a chance to get in range of Meander's Yoshi, but not to worry, it would only be seconds before I would get 
a stupid mushroom again, what the hell. I apparently use it immediately out of anger and smash into a wall, which I've convinced myself is the only thing that prevented me from hitting one of the bananas. I feel for the unfortunate soul who must have been behind me as a red shell creeps up and does not hit, most likely choosing to fail Blog, the fourth place racer. I'm pursued by a racer with a star but somehow outrun him or her using the boost pads and I'm fortunate enough to hit the toy boxes and get yet more mushrooms. I assume it was at this point that some of the dictators of the raffletocracy died of riotous laughter. I remember to make the jump and get to the top path only to hit a grass patch a tiny little bit, which as we know in Mario Kart is completely unforgivable and an action from which there will be no recovery. I switch to the player and first, Franco of Mexico from the last race out of anger and resentment for my own shortcomings before switching back, this time fortunately getting mushrooms again. It's not more than a few seconds before I finally get the gold mushroom, which I'm actually not going to complain about, and whose power is on a timer that I did not notice until after I watched this video. I use it as effectively as I can, taking my time as voraciously as possible and nearly catch up to meanders when I am hit by a lightning bolt and then a red shell, which as we all know is completely unforgivable as I switch to the player in first, Franco of Mexico from the last race, having given up on anything better than third. Even after getting another golden mushroom and getting back as much time as I could, Meanders just whiffs it. Honestly, I have no idea what happened, he was finer than just bleeding coins and falling off the jump, but I didn't have time to look back because I remembered this race is not about taking anyone's time, but mine. I stumble through the upper path just a little better than the last time and grab one last item box, deciding to just get used to the taste of mushrooms as I use them to cross the finish line as fast as I could. I'm the first player to come in second place, behind only of course Franco of Mexico, his apparent millennia of Mario Kart experience finally paying off. Even in this relatively successful first race, it has become apparent that in Mario Kart 8 virtually everything is out of my control, whether it be which kind of mushroom I get to what map we play or how many blood feuds I have to carry out to completion. With so much left to fate, it seems the best I can do is take my time every second I can get. I used Metal Mario with the standard cart, blue standard tires, and hang glider. My name is Gold Vision, and I hope you enjoyed this save point.